Hello and welcome to the Recursive Podcast. Our next guest is passionate about building companies and developing marketing strategies, but he's also experienced in building communities. Svetoslav Dimov is the co-founder and CEO of Dev.bg, the biggest IT community in Bulgaria. Dev.bg is also a leading tech job board and one of the main organizers of tech events in the country, helping IT professionals not only to find opportunities, but also to exchange ideas, knowledge and experience. Svetoslav Dimov, welcome to the Recursive Podcast. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's an amazing story that you have uh, with uh, Dev.bg. And I really enjoy the part that you're growing the community first and afterwards everything happens on its own. Uh, can you briefly get me through the process? When did you realize that community is so important for building? From day one, actually, because we, together with Ivo and Mitko, my co-founders, we gathered and we were aware that the need for IT talent will mm -hmm. grow and grow and grow in the next 10, 20 years, at least. Uh, so we thought, all right, the asset of having these people around would grow in value continuously in the long term. So the first idea is, was, all right, let's build a job board. Uh, let's publish uh, job ads. But then we thought, all right, we... Uh, That's a market that's a, a market that have very big players in it already. And if we start from nowhere, we, we have no chance to, to succeed because the, the very specific thing about building a job board or a website with uh, ads for real estate is that it's a marketplace. And the biggest challenge to enter a marketplace business is the egg or the chicken question. Do you bring first the people that offer jobs or do you bring first the people that want to apply? And we had neither of them. So we thought, all right, we need to go the patient way here, which is not very common for the for, for entrepreneurs. So we actually built the community for three years before actually starting building the job board itself. And building a community allowed us to be close to the people in every day so we are very close to their needs and on the other hand the community allowed us to build very good relationships with the companies in the sector on one hand and on the other hand to to be recognized and to have the trust of the people in the community so this allowed us to launch very fast the job board afterwards what's an uh, what an interesting way Uh, to, to validate your idea and bring it to life. Um, we are the, entering the entrepreneurial journey part of our conversation. Can you briefly just share some background stories about your experience in like, creating companies or working in like fields of action that you've had before together with Ivo and Mitko starting dev.bg as a project? Very briefly, I, I always talk to people about India. I went on an internship in India right after finishing university, and it was very challenging, very ch mindset changing, life changing, mm. I, I would say. And mm. when I came back, I was very energized. And together with a friend, we started our first business. In the course of, I believe, eight months, we tried three different ideas and our total revenue was zero level. Uh, the best thing about this business was that we don't have, uh, we didn't have much money because <laughs> if we had a lot of money, we, uh, we, you would have lost them. Yeah, all of them. <laughs> and uh, then I started a, a job in an online ma media, which was quite a good experience for me because I was the 15th employee of the media. Then the market grew very fast. Uh, after two years and a half, I was uh, deputy managing director. So I experienced managing a company in a how, uh, high growth state. Then the 2008 crisis came. So I experienced managing a company uh, in, in a very bad market. So we, we had to 
lay off people and the the worst stuff of, of entrepreneurship and of uh, managing companies. But that was invaluable experience. Then I started as uh, a dating business. Uh, I was organizing speed dating events and even events for singles. That was a uh, very great, very impactful business because you see people that come together, have marriages, have children because of the events you organize. And on the other hand, that was really a lot of uh, fun. Then I sold, the business, sold this business in 2010-13 and we started working with Ivo, my major co-founder in, in DevBG in 2010-14. But then we, we went through different ideas, unsuccessful, and then together with Evo and Mitko, we started DevBG in 2016. Awesome. And um, it seems like you are very entrepreneurial. Do you think um, entrepreneurs are by DNA or it is thought in a way? I think that's very entrepreneurs are not looking for what's the DNA of an, of an entrepreneur. It's, uh, you just try and feel if you love the game. I, mm. I have this theory and the more I, I communicate with long time entrepreneurs, the more I believe it's true. People go into entrepreneurship because they love the idea of being an entrepreneur creating great stuff, being disruptive, having a lot of money, making cool strategic decisions. But then once the, they go into entrepreneurship, they feel how the, the game is played. And the people that stay into entrepreneurship for, for a longer period of time and the people that are successful, they don't stay for the end goal, the, the money, the, all that stuff. That, that's part of the journey, but, but, the real, but the real reason they yeah. do that is because they love the game. And let's say a lot of people say, hey, entrepreneurship is very cool because people make a lot of money. I know very successful entrepreneurs that have so much money that they can retire today. But they work much harder than the rest of us. On the other hand, I know entrepreneurs that are into an entrepreneurial journey for more than 10 years now. And I am sure that if they gave the same effort, the same motivation and determination in a corporate environment, they would actually be far better off in terms of money. But, but the people that stay in this game in the long run are really the, the people that uh, enjoy the game. Speaking of DNA, my profile, profile is such that if I had to fill in uh, a test, are you ready for being an entrepreneur? I would fail miserably. I, I'm uh, kind of more conservative and risk reverse, which is a total no-no for an entrepreneur. And my profile is more task oriented than people oriented, which is not the typical uh, profile of a, of a leader. But once you know yourself, and I believe that's very important, you adjust your game so that you, you fit and you, you do what you want to do. Part of the game, uh, called, like so-called game by you, is of course the team. And then uh, having co-founders is part of, significant part of forming a team. So um, how did you build a relationship with your co-founder and are there some lessons to be learned about forming partnerships in a way that you want to play a game with someone for a very long time? My main uh, co-founder, uh, the one that I started first working with is Ivo. Uh, he's an entrepreneurial guy from the IT background. And w we very often say that if you want to do something in the long run with someone, start with a little project just to test how you you work with each other. And our, our story is very, very interesting, actually. We know each other from, I believe, 2007, 2008, uh, but we've never been close. We've, we've kept in contact a message here or there, mm -hmm. but we met on a personal development seminar in 2014 
right after we we sold our previous businesses I, I i had just sold my speed dating business and he had just sold his previous it company so we started discussing hey what are you up to blah 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 and it turned out that we were starting our uh, developing our next ideas but we were on our own so we didn't have a team yet and it's it's very hard to these first days when, when you don't have a co-founder because uh, nobody pushes you uh, nobody gives you another point of view so we start so we decided with you hey let's meet on a regular basis and exchange ideas discuss how our how our projects are going and kick each other's butt and slowly slowly we we started this uh, regular walks I, I don't remember was it weekly or bi-weekly and slowly slowly uh, the end result was that we abandoned our in initial ideas and we decided to start working together. The first few ideas that we tried were actually a big failure, uh, but the end result of the process was that we, we saw that we work together, not bad. And we are actually very different in terms of leadership style, in terms of, of people. He, he's more of the guy, let's, let's do it tonight, tomorrow it will be ready. And I'm more of a, okay, let's uh, calm down, let's plan it, uh, let's see what the end result looks like, let's break it in little steps. And this on one hand is the, the source of all our discussions and quarrels. On the other hand, both of us, we are aware that this difference actually helps the company to, to move forward. It's a balance, isn't it? Yeah. And, and Mitko joined the, the team w during these failed attempts before the FBG. Okay. And how did your uh, relationship with Ivo evolve over time from starting uh, uh, no, to have walks discussing your separate ideas into, okay, let's do something together into, okay, this doesn't work, this doesn't work, and then let's start uh, dev.bg. And what, what is the evolution of relationship with your co-founder from 2014 for the last eight years? Are Maybe there the like, do, do you know them so you can um, have the good feeling, okay, this task, this, his decision here will be, to be like what we are looking for because it's his, um, he, this is his um, superpower here, or? I believe that the, the, the area that we most develop the relationship is that we know each other really, really, really well now. Mm -hmm. And if we discussed a topic three years ago, we could have a two hours and a half discussion just based on our differences. Right now, on the 15th uh, minute, we say, Okay, that, that would be one of our two hours talk without uh, reaching a, a, agreement. A, yeah, a, an agreement. So let's decide who takes this decision and the other would be consultant or we, we start, okay, I don't agree with you, but let me make a compromise here. So I believe that's what have changed in, in the years. And yes, we, we know each other's strong sides and weak sides and sometimes uh, we say, hey, it's better you lead this thing because it's it's more, let's grab it and do it right now. Awesome. Um, are there some specific combination of skills or qualifications that make a team strong according to your personal experience? Yeah. I can tell, I don't know in, in general, I can tell you what, what people I love to, to work with. I, I had a, for... Shoot. For maybe f four years, I had this piece of paper in my wallet to constantly remind me what, what kind of people I want to, to work with. And I have five plus one criteria. So you go with good at heart. So you don't want to work with assholes. Then being curious about life. That's one thing that really demotivates me when working with people if they don't have this internal drive to, to do whatever. I, I, you, you may be the, the, the person that I disagree totally, but it's much better than the person that does not have this power, the drive to go forward. Then I want to work with smart people. And they are very different 
types of smart people. Uh, let's say Mitko, our third co-founder, is one of the smartest guys I know. And it's not because he, he had read a thousand books. He's one of these street smart guys, but he's really fantastic. Then I want to work with people who are proactive. If I am the only one in the team who pushes things forward, you just can't scale over like mm. five people. Um, and the last one, I had to think a bit about it, is responsible. I want, if we agree on something, I want to be able to forget about it because someone is taking care of it. And this may seem like very general stuff, like words that you, you see in every job ad but they really mean a big uh, deal for me. And the plus one factor is, have you heard of the supermarket test? Which, no? Uh, it's the following test. Imagine that you are in a supermarket and you see the candidate on the other, on, uh, at the other end of an aisle. And you're absolutely sure that this person did not see you. So what would you do? Would you? Would you go and have a, a enjoyable chat with him or her, or would you rather hide and continue shopping? So uh, this may seem a bit discriminative, but actually, I would I would say that's very important, and I would also advise candidates to run this test with uh, with with their leader. Naval has this saying: uh, Naval Ravikant from Angel List. Uh, why would you spend uh, your like, hun like 50, 100 hours a week or like a lot of time with someone that you don't want to spend five minutes with? So uh, this is what I like what I assigned towards what you just shared. Um, you work with people that you are really willing to go and have a chat with because you know it will be pleasant and you like the people. The, the first person I hired in, in the speed dating business, there were two candidates at the end which were quite equal. And I chose the candidate based on this test and we work together again now in DevBG. <laughs> Perfect. So it works not only in dating, but also in the <laughs> tech savvy environment, which is a totally different ball game. Um, why do you choose, choose to have a business model that's a marketplace oriented uh, in DevBG? And um, what do you think differentiates you on the market, given the global players like LinkedIn and Facebook and, you know, in Bulgaria, other? First of all, the, the marketplace model that we chose uh, is because we were patient enough to build it and because the marketplace business have a natural higher high entry barrier. It's, it's very tough and hard to, to break this chicken or the egg question in the beginning. But once you break it, it's very hard to copy for other competitors. And that's one of the reasons that marketplace businesses have higher valuation. So we said, all right, we, we're going to be patient now, but we want to, to do this at, at the end. And about Facebook and LinkedIn, especially b because we are a tech-only specialized job board, I wouldn't worry about Facebook because as far as I know, they're more... Um, uh, oriented towards blue color jobs, LinkedIn would for sure uh, grab some some kind of the market. But the the good thing here is that we are very niche and very, very local. So always LinkedIn would have uh, features and advantages that is impossible for us to copy. But always we can move faster in our environment and we can build things that are a value to the local Bulgarian environment, but they have too small scale for LinkedIn to build. Mm. Uh, this is a very interesting way of approaching the market. You're approaching a small local market and uh, not thinking about like scaling, growing other countries, etc., which is um, a quite a rare, um, rare find. Nowadays, everyone wants to go global, work big markets, states, Europe, the world, and you you are looking into the local market. How did you make this decision to like stick and get get 
into this very like deep niche like Bulgarian IT professionals. That's the first question we get when we talk with investors. Are you going global? <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. <laughs> it was nice meeting you. Uh, yeah. Where we we structured the first of all. We believe that we can have an impact here in Bulgaria, and we believe that the IT industry has uh, a very, very positive influence on the society as a whole. And then, as a business, we structured uh, our operations in a way that it's more, it's it's harder to easily copy in other markets. But then again, it's persistence. We. We want to to be really successful here, to to be the go-to place when people and companies uh, think about hiring in the IT sphere, about employer branding, which is already happening, and then to transfer uh, the model in other countries. If if that's going to happen or not, uh, we are not sure. Uh, right now, we are, we are still on the on the stage of we are building the company in Bulgaria. I heard values. Where do entrepreneurs and when when do entrepreneurs this like make decision based on values? When they do realize that it's not about making money, it's about making impact. It's not about scaling and growing and uh, getting billion dollar evaluations. It's about making a positive change and giving opportunities to people here to grow the ecosystem because the ecosystem itself by itself gives more to the society. It's now that you said the question this way, I, I should answer <laughs> as a mother Teresa. Like, <laughs> uh, of course, we want to make money. Of course, we, we, we it's want not to sustainable, stay. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. That, that's actually the 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 why of why we're successful and why we uh, built s such a big community. Because the usual life cycle of a community is a couple of guys get together, they are really enthusiastic about technology, mm. they start organizing stuff, and in the first six to 12 months, it's booming. Then one of them gets a baby, one of them gets sent to another location to work on a project, and because that's volunteer work, it's uh, on the, at the end of their priority list, and this and things fall apart. So we decided we gotta do it in different way. We gotta uh, do it sustainable, and we want to to get the reward of putting all our efforts. And going to your questions about values, I believe that entrepreneurs and every one of us always acts based on their values. But, it's just values are different for different people. And um, I wouldn't say that people that are in this game just to make money are bad people. No. And, and no one said that. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, I would, and I wouldn't say that we are not in this game to make money. Yes, we want to make money, of course. And, uh, but doing doing a good thing is actually it gives us more power and it's actually the the thing that gives you energy in some of the hardest moments and each entrepreneur has some and also fulfillment that's true all right um what is the power of such a community that if you've already built according to you and how do you see it develop forward it's the power is enormous. A community is like an instrument, any kind of, or a weapon, if you if you want to say. And it's very. Uh, the hard question here is how you're gonna use this power. So we try to to use it in in a positive way. Actually, the the events that we organize, we actually share knowledge of people from the community to other members. Um, Moving forward from day one, we, we've had like a thousand ideas, much more than, uh, than we want to actually execute at the moment. And I, I don't want to go into specifics, but right now we, we have a few things that are planned that we want to execute. But the thing that is right now on the table is uh, to become the absolute number one uh, 
place when people think of IT jobs and we are on our way there. Mm. Do you see there is a way that Bulgaria can compete for IT talent regionally and then probably globally? And um, is there something missing like currently as an ingredient? Is there a missing ingredient to get to attract more people from other countries to Bulgaria? I'll divide my answer in, in, in two parts. The first part is the way Bulgaria is attracting right now uh, foreign talent is by Bulgarian companies opening offices, development offices abroad. And it's uh, becoming more, I see it in the, in the industry more and more often. Uh, right now, the, the countries of choice are Macedonia, uh, Serbia. From last year, I hear a lot about companies opening offices in Turkey. Uh, and I recently heard about a company that's uh, opening an, an office in India. So that's one way to to expand and to, to attract international talent. The other thing is remote. The remote would be very big. Uh, and with the whole situation in, in Ukraine, it's and with the COVID, it's it's getting even even bigger. The problem here with Bulgaria is first legislation, which I know Besko and the government are actively working to, to solve. And the other thing is that um, there is not a, awareness in the other countries, in other countries, about what we are at des, as a destination, uh, mm. a, a country to to work and live in. Uh, people are not aware that because of the lower taxes that we have, actually, uh, for most development roles, you have a higher standard of living in Sofia if you are a developer in, in Sofia than if you are a developer in London or, or Berlin. So that's the the thing that we got to work uh, for. And we, we, we see it firsthand because we tried advertising our remote jobs from Bulgaria in different markets. Employer branding of Bulgaria then. Yeah. Awesome. And because you previously mentioned that the IT industry is putting significant impact in a positive way on our economy and also, of course, on the society uh, as a side effect, um, do you see additional spillover effects of the, of the success of the industry that we're having? We recently just got our first unicorn. There are other companies on the way to becoming... Uh, the second, third, fourth, hopefully in the next few years we have at least 10 because now yeah, one is easy, let's have 10. So what's the spillover effect of having the IT industry and growing, um, as you said, is going to be growing in 10, 15, 20 years? That's my favorite topic. Uh, let's start from the whys. When mm. people, in, most people, the general public in Bulgaria, when they talk about the IT industry, they talk about those people that sit in front of computers and make a lot of money. Yes, that's the first factor and it's great. People in the industry, there is just more money than compared to other industries. But there are two more very, very important factors. One of them is we have a critical mass of smart and thinking people in this industry. And then we have knowledge and expertise on a world level. Because on one hand, we have the, the big international companies that are actually transferring all their know-how in terms of practices and stuff in Bulgaria. And then the Bulgarian companies are competing on the global market. So they, so they need to steal and to educate them to, 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 to use these practices. So we have an industry with a lot of, we have a group of people that are smart that have the money so that they don't have to to think about how I'm going to Live. buy food for yeah. for my child Live. or buy my rent mm -hmm. or buy my rent. And then I have the know-how and the expertise. And this is the 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 group of people, the, the active part of this group that's going to change the society because that's what you need. And it's already happening and the two the 
two areas that are impacted the most by the IT industry are education and entrepreneurship. You, you already uh, said about entrepreneurship, like mm -hmm. the, the, the money, the expertise going in the early stages of these ventures are coming from people coming from the IT industry. And then the education, apart from all the, the educational institutions that want to to educate and raise developers, there are uh, great initiatives in the general education sphere that are started by IT entrepreneurs. Because why? Because they have the smarts, the money, and the know-how. That's fantastic. Yeah. And they see what they can do as a payback, and they can see how they can grow talent. So we have these uh, all the IT academies, all the investments into entrepreneurial centers related to universities and especially tech entrepreneurship, which is amazing. It's great. Yeah, education um, education is part of the, uh, the, the next things that we're looking into to grow the market with more people that are earning money through their knowledge, intellectual capacity, instead of just following tasks and doing like or, or, or they should be doing and just instead of acting as an AI <laughs> yeah <laughs> a manual AI uh, fun fact uh, recently I had a conversation with a uh, very smart uh, Bulgarian IT manager called Ivan Gochev and uh, he uh, he managed to uh, mention yet again a favorite topic of mine uh, looking to work for product companies because product companies are uh, the easiest way to develop more value out of the Bulgarian IT ecosystem and get better recognition like Payhawk as a, uh, as a very good example here. Um, switching from per, uh, entrepreneurship and education, which is the uh, something that's going to be impacted by uh, the whole IT ecosystem into leadership. Um, how would you describe the way that you're leading? What's your leadership style? Svetlio. What's the leadership style? It, it took me around 10 years in, to management to answer this question. And in the last five years, I'm working on upgrading the question, uh, the answer. Because the, the answer to your question is, I'm not the typical profile of a, of a great leader. I'm more task-oriented than people-oriented. What does it mean? Mm. I'm good at taking a vision and breaking it into, into smaller tasks, organize the people to, to go forward, uh, getting things on schedule and that stuff. But with the people, it's not that I don't care about them or I don't think they're important. Just on the contrary, I, I, I know that that's like the, the single most important thing in a venture when you, when you look in the, in the long term. But my problem, and I realized it very clearly five years ago, is that when people are doing great job, I don't appreciate it because I believe that's the default. I mean, that's why we are working together <laughs> because you're do doing great job. And it's, it, it may sound stupid, but it's actually a very, uh, a very real thing with me. And once realizing this, uh, I've been working with myself to to actually manage this from from one point of view and the other point of view is as I said earlier to to change my game like at least give the people uh the right expectations uh be very strict on your one on ones uh, even though you think that you don't have so much th things to to share make a a regular thing in the morning. Hey, who would you who would you thank this uh, today? Who, mm. who who did a great job? So I believe it's the, the awareness. It's not so much the the leadership style. It's the the awareness of what you are as a leader. What's your strong points and weak points, so that you can play the game better. It's it's like in in sports. I mm. I love basketball but i'm a short guy uh so i i play the game that's that a short guy can 
can play or but but on the other hand I'm very fast or at least I, I used to be <laughs> 15 years you know, ago. The, in the NBA there is a guy that just revolutionized the game. It's called Stephen Curry. And uh when people were saying it NBA is for tall guys and big guys, he just became the first unani- like unanimous MVP a few years ago. Only from like shooting, playing small ball, moving the ball around, creating opportunities and not rebounding. So there you go. Uh, it's, uh, if I can summarize what you just said, it's about knowing yourself, what your strengths are and where your blind spots are so you can handle them. And working with yourself, I, I, yeah. I see a, a, psych, a psychologist for the last three awesome. years. I, I think that's very important to talk about because uh, when you talk one-on-one with a lot of people, they are getting such... I would say help, and, and I look at it as a going to the gym. Like I, I want to 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 work with my inner feelings yeah. the same way I work with my body. All right, I, I don't go to the gym as yeah. you can see, but uh, I'm active in in other sports so that I I can feel my body well. And the the same thing is with uh, mentors, coaches, psychologists. They like yeah. the different parts of the game, but that's very important for us to talk more about so that. People don't feel kind of stigma. I think in Bulgaria there is still s- some stigma about it. Yeah, it's mental gym, isn't it? Yeah. Awesome. Um, is there something that demotivates you? Something that is like cutting off your energy and your momentum? It's. I said earlier that the people that that uh, don't have this drive, curiosity about life in them, mm. uh, the the thing that it kind of demotivates me. But the the thing about entrepreneurship is that you can't afford yourself to be demotivated. If you are easily demotivated, then you won't be in, in entrepreneurship. Actually, the the one of the hacks uh, of entrepreneurships and the must-haves is learning how to go through the downs and don't fall apart. When everything is falling apart, you need to, to stay stable. Mm. And now with, with uh, the 10 plus years of experience, I can manage it because I know it's true, but right in the beginning, it's very hard. You have your own blog about leadership. And um, how does this help you organize your thoughts and observ- observations as a leader yourself? Yeah, a blog about leadership sounds fancy, but yeah, I, I have a book <laughs> where I it, it helps me to structure my thought because I believe I'm writing. better in writing okay. than in speaking because uh, I take an idea, let's say. Uh, a problem that I'm saving it, uh, I'm facing in my day-to-day activities, and I, and I say, all right, let's let's dig deeper in into this topic. And some I write, uh, I read some stuff, I talk with some people, and I think about different approaches. Then uh, the other thing that I do writing my book is taking something that I've done that's not. Uh, that I've thought about and I've practiced it and it turned out to be an interesting outcome. I take this uh, practical example Mm -hmm. and I evolve the whole idea or approach around it. So writing, having in mind what you previously just, uh, what you previously said, is about structuring your thoughts to be able to break down tasks and things and understand them better? More see the big picture than oh. break down. Oh, okay, okay. But so, it, it, it depends. It, it, it might be both. Let, for example, every t- I have an article on onboarding a new person mm-hmm. in the team. Every time I have to onboard a new pe- person in the team, I open the article and see what what I wrote about it because these are my thoughts. But then I, I took some time off the the daily tasks and I thought, all right, what is the structured way to to do this? Are you updating your articles from before with the new knowledge and new experience that experiences that you're going through? Not really, but it's a good idea. The the main the the main obstacle is that I hardly find 
time for it because it, I need at least an hour mm. to, to set on this on writing. Okay. So let's say that this is the bare minimum, the thing that you have found out that it works and you're sticking to it, um, which is which is awesome. It's some kind of a, a, a cheat code, a reminder. Okay, let's see what was the most important thing here. Let's go. Uh, yeah, it sounds like a good plan. I might put this to use myself. Um, you You just mentioned that you have this mental fitness, but you also take care of your energy. Um, what helps you recharge? It helps me recharge. It's one thing I do, one thing that I discovered in India <laughs> was yoga and the, the whole spiritual thing. Mm -hmm. Before that, I was, if you can't prove it, don't talk to me about it. Uh, but then from 2009, I started started practicing yoga regularly. And one thing that helps me a lot, I do some yoga practices every night before going to sleep. I started in 2010-11, I think. And up to this date, I have missed only two, two times. And like in this period, you have uh, marriage, children, losses, uh, busy days, nights without sleep, being drunk, Flights. being in a hospital, <laughs> and all these yeah. evenings before mm. going to sleep, you, no matter if it's uh, 10 p.m. or 11 a.m. Mm. <laughs> for the day, I, I do this practice. And that helps me a lot to clear my mind because, you know, as an entrepreneur, especially in a small company, we are 20 people right now, you are still at least 30% evolved in operations and you switch tasks. Uh, that's something that I do really daily. Uh, the other things that make that help me recharge is nature. I, I love going to the mountains. It's harder with the, with the kid, but uh, it's still possible. I love spending time with, with friends, reading in the recent years. It's strange because as a teenager, I, I did not read any... Um, Lit literature and now I, I read a, a lot and I'm not talking about professional literature hmm. and sports. Well, about yoga, do you talk about the movement and the, like the physical sensation and mind and body connection or you're talking about the meditative state that you put your head around and like let thoughts go away? like? Where is the meditation part? I feel kind of uncomfortable to talk about this yeah. topic because... Yeah. It's your way. We're, it's it, not it, like... It's my way. It's uh, Back in 2009, yeah. was the, um, I was working in the online media and it was the, the times when things were falling apart. So I had two people in Bulgaria that... I kind of trusted when they talked about this mm -hmm. blah, blah stuff and mm -hmm. spiritual stuff. So I called the two of them uh, and I asked them, hey, I want to go to yoga. What's your recommendation for a yoga teacher? And they both told me one and the same name. And it was yeah. Annie Pavlova. And I started going through there uh, to okay. attending uh, mm -hmm. her classes. And I still go to her classes. And I have my understanding of, of the yoga, why I'm doing it, but I feel incompetent and to talk about yoga mm -hmm. as, as, a, as an experience because... Yeah. So for you, it's a tool which is important for your life, which is awesome. I was just curious about how, how do you perceive it and what what gives you more about it's 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 a two, for for me personally mm. it's a it's a two on a let's say few stages first mm. of all physical movement i by doing physical yeah. practices i feel better with my with my body then the mind like with uh, the, the evening practices are actually more related to the to the mind but there is a, a a spiritual touch to it too. 
which I'm not comfortable yeah. with. Mm. About. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Or oh, you just got in curious there, you know? <laughs> um, You've already mentioned the fact that we are more and more switching to working remotely. There are a lot of Bulgarians working from Bulgaria for their foreign companies and vice versa, of course. Um, what do you think the future of work looks like? I hope the future of work uh, is that people have the freedom to work the thing that adds more value. Uh, my, my son is three years old, mm. and you know, with this, all this home office, and hey, I gotta go, go to work, he starts asking, why would you go to work? And the, at the kindergarten, they, they tell him bec because uh, he has to, to buy sweets or because he has to, to make money or stuff. And it was kind of a philosophical question for me. Okay, wh why do we go to work? And uh, that's one of the reasons we want to, to buy uh, bread when we go to the market. But, but the real value is, uh, and that's what I told him. Hey, when we go on a walk, you see that someone made uh, the tree, someone makes blocks, someone made your coloring pencils. And in order for us as a society, in other words, for a kid, mm. uh, to, to enjoy all these goods, we need to do something that is a value to all other people. And I hope that the future of work is that more people find their spot where they are doing something that is of value to the society. And I, I hope with the job board we're doing this. In, in terms of more practical things, what, what we hear is that for and what we, what we see firsthand, remote will go big, but it will, will, it will not, uh, the, the office work will not vanish maybe. Mm. 30 to the optimist say 40 percent of the people would would go entirely mm. entirely remote but the standard will, would be hybrid yeah people are social animals aren't we yeah we need other people to work with we need a, a supermarket test <laughs> so we, we need this in our lives <laughs> awesome that's great uh, thanks for sharing um we would like to always close the conversations with a value-based question. And the question is, um, what would you like to be remembered for? I don't, I think that the whole idea of being remembered is kind of strange and unrealistic because if you, if you look back in history, who do we remember? Like a few people would think about Bell, but most people would think about Hitler. And the earth is here for a couple of million years or a hundred million years. And the people that we remember are from the last two, three, four thousand years. So Actually, being really remembered, I think it's unattainable and kind of worth, worthless. What I love to be uh, remembered, uh, it's more important who I want to be remembered by. By my, uh, my wife, my children and uh, grandchildren, hopefully one day, and my best friends for a couple of years just to, to think of, hey, we had a great time and he cared. Awesome. Sedlo, thank you very, very much for joining us today, having this wonderful conversation. Wish you and the team of Dev.bg uh, great success and uh, the job board to be growing and why not scaling uh, outside of Bulgaria. Uh, thank you for caring so much about uh, the right things and can't wait to have our next conversations soon. It was a pleasure. Thank you for all the, the great stuff that you're doing. The Recursive Podcast will be back soon. Stay tuned for more inspirational conversations with tech leaders from Southeast Europe and check out our YouTube channel to catch up with the episodes.
And if you are just as passionate about innovation as we are, hit subscribe for the Recursive Podcast on YouTube or your favorite podcast platform. We're everywhere. <laughs>